Vandiyadeva knocked the horse. He was going towards the old room. As he somehow remembered the route he had come from old Ere, he purposefully walked without asking anyone for directions. First he went along a forest path for a short distance. He knew that the horse had suffered a lot. Valavarayan was also very tired. It had been several days since he had slept soundly for a while. Apart from occasionally closing our eyes and rocking and falling, we never slept peacefully in one place. If he went to the palace and told the princess the news, then his responsibility was over, sleep peacefully. Can sleep for a long time, why, he planned to sleep on the day count including the days gone by. He thought of the joy he would feel when he told Princess Kundave, I have accomplished the task you told me. He thought how the face of the goddess would light up on hearing that. The memory filled him with romance. He remembered another thing. How many lies and fabrications has he told since leaving Kanji? He said it out of necessity. But when he thought of all that, his heart and body sank. Prince Aroma's Hivarma's attitude changed after he got to know him for a while. He thought that those involved in royal affairs should know the subtle tricks. He also had a desire to regain the lost kingdom of his forefathers through such royal tactics. All that thought has now changed. After seeing Prince Aroma's Hivarmar's honesty and truthfulness, he became disgusted with fake cigars. He also thought about the lie he had told last night to get the wizard's ear, thinking he was saving him. His heart sank when he thought that something bad had to happen. Has anyone else heard that? Maybe someone told Kundave Devi herself? Younger Brady won't believe it. But how big a risk? Henceforth, we should stop pretending that this is not the case. To tell the truth, so if there is a problem, you have to deal with it. Let people like that heroic Vaishnava and people like Ravi Dasan work together. Why do we bother? Let us have the victory with the support of the sword. That is enough, and it is okay to lose one's life because of it. All Tantrum mantras should be left behind. As he went on thinking like this, he did not notice for a while that the horse's pace was halted. Why, he got a little teary-eyed as he kept thinking about the horse. He woke up with a start as the horse stumbled and crouched. The horse was seen to stagger, unable to keep one of its forelegs on the ground. He immediately dismounted, knocked the horse over and picked up the foreleg which appeared to be crippled. At the bottom of it was a small stone. He took it gracefully and threw it away. Good luck, no major injuries. Again he patted the horse and cheered it up and got on its back. I remembered what the Arab said on the ship. Tamils are cruel, they have no knowledge. They make the horses run barefoot without shielding their hooves. How long will the horses live like that? Thinking this Vandiyadeva drove his horse. Soldiers wear chest armor when they go to battle. Ironing a horse's hoof was a miraculous feat. However, he had heard earlier that this was done in other countries. One should ask about this in the first encounter in Kalapetara. If possible, you can try to put armor on this horse's hoof. Otherwise, it's difficult to get to old Ere. If it falls in the middle, another horse must earn. How to earn? Have to steal from someone. See you. That very memory made Vandaya the van feel ashamed. Vandiyadeva deliberately diverted his horse from the forest path and reached Rajapat. Come what may, from now on we have to go through Rajapat. No one who knows himself can be on this page. The vandals onto Rajas will follow. So is the magician. So there is no risk. Also, if you go with Rajapat, there will be a workshop somewhere. Let's see if we can put iron armor on the horse's hoof. Vandiyathevan's hopes were not in vain. After a short distance, a village came into view. There seemed to be some sort of agitation in the village. On one side they had built and decorated torrens in the streets and houses. Perhaps the town was decorated like this knowing that the great destroyer would come this way. It is certain that the destroyer and his entourage will be far gone before they arrive. On the other side, the people of the village, women, men, old people, children, were all standing there in groups and talking anxiously. 
he could not guess what the matter was. When some of them saw him coming on horseback, they approached him with the intention of stopping him. Vandiyathevan did not allow it and left the horse and went up. He did not like to get involved in unnecessary fuss. After crossing the village, he found a butcher shop on the side of the road. He didn't feel like going up past it. He stopped the horse and went into the workshop. Inside the workshop he saw a blacksmith working. A boy was playing the accordion. At the same time as Vandiyathevan entered, it appeared to him that another man had disappeared behind him. But he paid no attention to all this. The sword that the blacksmith was holding in his hand caught his eye and attention. It is a rare sword. It appeared that the blacksmith was working on it in the workshop. A part of it glittered like silver. Another part of the fire that had just been taken out of the fire glowed like a golden flame. A sword is a sword, isn't it? Vandiyadeva wondered in his mind.